Okay, so you've downloaded your data from Qualtrics. You know where it is, set up somewhere on a file. It's in an SPSS format, it's been extracted. You're ready to start looking at your data. You're keen to get on with your data analysis, but this is the next stage. Sit down, relax, grab a cup of your favorite warm drink, be prepared to do some cleaning, some sorting, some worrying, some calming down, some panicking, some calming down. We're gonna get you through it all. So let's have a look at the data. So you download some data and you begin to think, oh dear, what is all of this? And when you look at the data, you've got data view and variable view in SPSS. Data view, each row gives you an individual participant's data. Um, and each column gives you different information about that individual. Or if you like, each column gives you the same information, in this case, duration, how long it takes them to complete it, for all of the different participants. So the number of rows you have in your data, I have a lot of data here, the number of rows you have in your data should equal the number of participants you have in your study. So if I can finally get to the end of my data in this, have about 1,000 participants. What you'll notice, some data is a bit hazy. Some people have completed some bits and not others. Do not panic about that. Don't worry about that. That is okay. Don't necessarily delete their data. Some people have completed some of it, but on all of it. Participant number 911, well, they completed this measure, but decided, which is quite their right, to not complete this measure. That's okay. Do not worry about it. We can see what we can do with that later. So don't start deleting people. First step, to get a sense of your data, handle on your data. So you should know your Qualtrics data file. You should know all of the variables that you've got. You should know what they're measuring. You should know what constructs they're, they're assessing. You should know how to score them. So before we get onto that, which is in a later video, we'll get onto scoring them. But let's just look at the data. So what you'll probably notice as you go across is you realize, ah, these are the questions that I've asked and these refer to the, the questionnaires that I'm interested in. If you look on variable view, you can actually go down to some of those. So this. Um, if you look at this question here, MLQ1, um, you can click on the label and it should tell you, if I just move across, it tell me exactly my question. So this one says, please respond on the following scale. So this will be your description in the Qualtrics. I understand my life's meaning. Well, if we all did that, wouldn't that be a nice place? Right. So that question says, I understand my life's meaning. On Qualtrics, I should have that question on there. If I want to make things a bit clearer, I can. If I want to get rid of that and just leave it with the actual question um, that I'm interested in. I'm not going to spend time doing that, but you'll get the sense. Um, you have to own this. I'm just going to move my head. So... I can delete the instructions and I can just look at the questions. It is probably worth doing that because it just makes your life easier. So a bit of housekeeping to start with is probably worthwhile. But before we get on to trying to sort out your variables, what we need to do is realize that actually you're going to have a load of variables you didn't really ask for and you're not sure what they are. So you might have when they started it, their dates, things like that. I've deleted a couple of those already. Um, but um, the way you do it, just if, if you're not aware, so the first few data fields are going to have some gaps because you haven't asked for these and you might have some some generated data here respondent ids you haven't necessarily asked for that um you can just delete most of that so when the data was started how long they took when it was finished all of this kind of data you can just highlight it and click on delete so i am just doing this so what you might want to have is a master data file that you've downloaded from qualtrics and save that um, which you don't touch. Then you save the sort of edited file. And then what I would generally do is save another file after I've done the getting the scoring for the questionnaires and those things. And I'll talk you through each of those. So for this stage, I'm just going to delete those of information that I'm not really interested in. Yours might look slightly different. Um, we'll get to consent. Now, this one is just you should have when they consent and a zero if they haven't. Everybody's consented here. Um, they shouldn't be able to complete the data set if they haven't consented anyway, so they should all be ones. So that's fine. I don't really need to keep that in my data file. So now I'll get into my actual data. So I've got my gender here. It's automatically coded that. I can change that in SPSS. If I go up to that little thing that says value labels, I can change that and look at the actual labels. So we've got females and males. Or if I go into variable view, if I'm interested, I can go across to the values and can see that it has one for male and two for female. Qualtrics has already scored it in that. Um, I can change those at this stage if I wanted to. So 
that's good. We've edited out the, the information that we didn't need. So now it's got all of these questions that we did need and we need to think about scoring those. But before we get to that stage, sometimes there are certain things that happen in Qualtrics that you don't expect. And when you look at the data, and I've downloaded this data on purpose because it has happened, um, is and we need to check this, is that it scores things in a way that you weren't expecting. So if I look at my MLQ, so if I just compare that with what I'm expecting here, um, uh, it's meaning in life questionnaire. Sorry, that's this, this one here. So this is my MLQ. It's a questionnaire about meaning in life. Um, that's the reference. Useful for me to know. I would suggest it is quite useful for you to format things in this way. You can put them in your appendices. This is the instructions, which is quite useful for me to know. This is the scoring I'm expecting from absolutely untrue to absolutely true, one to seven. And these are the actual questions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I should have in my SPSS file, 10 MLQ questions. Well, that's looking pretty good. Okay, so we've got one to 10. They've been labeled MLQ because I labeled that in Qualtrics. Um, now, uh, there are the questions. As I said, I could go through and edit these so I could see my actual questions. Now, here are the values. If I look back at my file, I'm thinking expecting one to seven. I look at my values here. One, absolutely untrue, to seven, absolutely true. Excellent, that's really good. That's all scored in the way that I want it to be. That's not without the reverse scoring, which I'll talk about in a moment. Okay, so then we've got this other questionnaire here. So this might be your second questionnaire. So this is the, um, we've got 15 questions. This happens to be the material uh, value scale. So we've got some questions here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That looks good. You notice here, that I have some subscales. So actually I'm gonna have three subscales within this scale. Um, I also notice here I've got some reversed questions. So this is gonna start getting a little bit fancy to try and think about recoding that. You can do it all in SPSS, don't worry. So this is what my scale is from, um, and I'm expecting a five point scale. So I'm gonna look in SPSS and I go my material values. And it says here, strongly agree scored four, degree five, neither degree or disagree, six, seven, and eight. I wasn't expecting that. <clears throat> I wanted it as one to one to five. That's what I'm wanting. Uh, one to five, and I've got four to eight. Time to have a sup of coffee. Okay, don't panic. If I look at everything, so if I look at my data view, so there's some weird scores in here, and I want those to be in a one to five scale, not a four to eight. But that's okay, because SPSS is a giant calculator. It can do such things. So what I want to do is transform that data. So I'm gonna take that data and compute. So if it is a four, I want it to actually be a number one. If it is a, um, let me look at, what did I say? If it is a five, I want it to be a number two. If it is six, I want it to be a number three. If it's a seven, I want it to be a number four. And if it's an eight, I want it to be a number five. So quite easy to do that, transform. Now, what I often would be do here is recode it into different variables. I could recode it into the same variable, but I don't trust my own memory. So I'm gonna recode it into different variables. So I'm gonna give it a new name. So I'll keep the original and have a new set, which I'll use for all of the other things I want to do later on. Okay, so recode into different variables. So what it says here is to choose my variables. Quick tip, people often kind of get really um, uh, messy here and they can't work out what variables what two things one you can move this it's important to understand that two you can change it to display the variable names that's much easier so it is these material ones that's the ones I'm interested in so if I take the first item I'm going to give it a new name material values one and I'm going to call it n for new okay so now I want to tell SPSS the old and new values so the old value was four. I wanted that to be a new value of one. Okay, so I've put the old value of four, new value of one. The old value of five, I want to put a new value of two. The old value of six, I want a new value of three. The old value of seven, I want a new value of four. And the old value of eight, I want a new value of five. And if they had missing, we could just keep it the same. So this is what it's gonna do. Anybody who said four, it's the same as someone saying one. So they're gonna get new value of one. Anybody said five is gonna get two. Anybody said six is gonna get three. Now actually they didn't say six, they just clicked on a box. They had no idea what that score was. So it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna click on continue. Now at this point, I'm gonna click on change 
and I can see that it says mat underscore one is going to become mat underscore one n. And I can look at my old and new values and that's going to work OK. Now, I could do this and go through each of them, but I'm going to give you a little tip here. I generally do this in another file, which is called syntax. So at this point, so if you're happy with that, you can click on. I mean, if you're happy with just doing it like that, you can move your 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 variables and go through that process again and again for each of your variables. I find it easier to do a different thing. So when at this stage, stop, have a sup of coffee, click on paste. This will open a new window. Do not be scared. It's OK. It is a syntax window. It's just the code for exactly what I've just asked it to do. Recode mat one, where four becomes one, five becomes two, six becomes three, seven becomes four, eight becomes five. System missing is the same into mat one N. So what I can actually do now is put in all of my variables and it just means it saves me a hell of a lot of time. So I'm just going to highlight mat one here. And so what you'll notice is I'm doing is just copying and pasting is just using control V here. Mat three, mat four, mat five, mat six, mat seven, mat eight, mat nine, mat ten, mat eleven, mat twelve, mat thirteen, mat fourteen, mat fifteen. Let's move my head out of the way. So you see here, all of those other ones are the things that I want to recode. And I'm just going to put those as new variables. But what I need to do with my new variables is just add the letter N at the end of each of them. So then that's going to be my new variable. So it's just going to create all of this for me. I could have done this in, in, in exactly the same way by just clicking OK. But this means I get the whole process much easier. And it does mean if I ever download my data again, I can just use this file. So if you've never used a syntax file before, do not panic. It's just a piece of code that says recode this. And I can just type in. So in case I forget, if I just do three stars, this bit below recodes the material values into the correct scale. So I know what that is. How do we get this to work? Well, that's very simple too. We just highlight the piece of text or code and we click on the green button that says play, run selection. So you'll notice, actually, the output always puts this bit of code in it anyway. So it's run this. There's no errors. That's good. Sometimes you get errors. You just have to go back and check on those. So now what I need to do is go back to my data, look at my data, and I should find at the end of my data, I've got all of this new data. So this is my material values data. And if I look at that data view, so this person here, they had five. In my new scale, that should be two. Uh, so if I go all the way to the very end, that person has now, on material value of one, got a new value of two. Great. SPSS has just now created that. So that scale is the correct scale. Time to save. Right. File. Save as data edited. So if I've made a mistake, I can always go back to that data original. I've now got an edited data file. So... This is looking OK. So I've got this. My, I haven't panicked. Although that was coded in the wrong way, I've actually changed it to code it in the right way. So this material, so the MLQ is looking good. The material values is looking good. Mind. So let's have a look at this. This is my mindfulness scale. I'm expecting a one to five scale. Let's look at what happened here. Mindfulness. Oh, no, it's a 12 to 17 scale. I'm going to do the same thing again. 